In this video, you're going to see a sneak peek on the future of Adobe Captivate. I just got back from the Adobe Learning Summit in Las Vegas, uh, ALS 2023, and uh, it was fantastic. We had a really great time. There was a lot of information to learn. It's a brand new version of Adobe Captivate, but they're not done yet. So we got to see a sneak peek. And of course, I asked uh, Sherith Ramaswamy if she would join me here today and share a little bit of those details with all of you. Um, everyone, this is Paul here. I just got back from the Adobe Learning Summit, which was fantastic. And um, on this call with me right now is uh, Sherith Ramaswamy. Am I saying that right, Sherith? Pretty close. That's right. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, I, I kind of I've known Sherith for a little while now, but uh, I got to meet her in person at the Adobe Learning Summit, which is one of the great benefits of going to these events. I get to meet the people, you know, in real life that, you know, I've only connected with online and stuff like that. So that's a lot of fun. Sherith did a, uh, a sneak peek. You've probably seen sneak peeks before in the past, not only at the Adobe Learning Summit, but other Adobe events as well. And she's been gracious enough to agree to give my viewers of my YouTube channel a sneak peek that we saw at the Adobe Learning Summit. So uh, take it away, Sherith, and I'll jump in maybe with some questions as we go. And uh, I hope everyone really enjoys this. All. So uh, yes, I mean, though we launched our product just about you know, three, four months ago, we still have something new. We're working on something exciting, and you know, we we were excited to share it. And now that we shared it at the sneaks, I'm happy to meet with you and share it again for your viewers. So uh, let me just get started. So to begin with, the first feature that I would like to share is that of uh, the review functionality. I know, um, you know, this has been an ask for some time now, and I'm happy to say that we have added the review functionality. So I've just created a dummy course over here. And mm -hmm. uh, if you had to share this for review, so now you don't have to kind of go through those lengthy review cycles anymore and you don't need to you can have all your review comments in one place so over here on the right hand side under the properties plan panel you can see there's a new icon which says share for review so you just click that and then if you're given a link over here you can add people so you first click the create review cycle and then over here you can add the address of the per person you want to send it to. So, and this could be, you know, uh, you don't need a Captivate license for this. So your reviewer Perfect. will be able to review the course uh, outside of Captivate. So over here, I'm just going to send this to myself. This is to my personal Gmail account mm -hmm. so that I wanted to show you that you don't even need an Adobe ID for this. So oh, I'm cool. going to now, yeah, I have sent this to myself. So over here, I just need to click open and this begins the review of my course. So this is the complete published course. This is not just a storyboard. This is not the design document. So the reviewer will be able to see the course as it has been published. And over here, you can see on the right hand side, this is where you share your feedback. So over here, I will say, oh, okay, this looks good. And I click submit and you will see that the feedback has been provided and then you have all these other options over here where you can edit it you can delete it and uh, in addition to this as you can see Captivate is auto responsive so you can view it on multiple devices so we are currently seeing the desktop view of the product of the course and if I click tablet over here I see the tablet view you can now provide your review feedback on multiple views. So if I give a feedback over here saying, I think the image uh, needs some improvement, <laughs> right? And I submit mm -hmm. it. So you can see that this feedback has been captured for the tablet view. And oh, similarly, that's... yeah. Oh, that's awesome. 
<laughs> and uh, for the mobile view, again, I'm just saying looks fantastic. Sure. And uh, over here, it's now captured a separate feedback for the mobile view. And That's I can really filter cool. this. Absolutely. So, and over here, you have this toggle button. I'm going to take it off. So, it's going to show me only the feedback related to this particular view. Right. Isn't this great? So, as I move between the different views, I will be able to see only that particular feedback, which is applicable to that slide and to that particular viewport. And if I want to see all of them, I just need to turn it on and I see all the feedback to, at once. That's really brilliant. I know myself i'm i've been using captivate long enough to remember what was available for a review tool in earlier versions and you know, some of my viewers might have seen that as well and yeah this is a a thousand percent improvement <laughs> over what was available before i'm really looking forward to this awesome yeah i mean as you can see uh you know we are we are focusing on new functionality that we want to bring to Captivate. But at the same time, we're also, we also want to ensure that all the existing features and functionality of Captivate Classic are also brought to this. So you will see a lot of development in the coming weeks, months, years. So, you know, keep, keep tuned in. Yes, for sure. So the next functionality, which is very exciting, is the AI Copilot. So let me just show you what the AI Copilot looks like. So let me close this course now. So the AI Copilot. So I'm just going to select this and I click begin. So this is like an absolutely uh, new panel. So mm -hmm. this is going to help you. So we are, we are introducing uh, development of courses using generative AI. So you just need to fill out the title and uh, the target audience, uh, and you can specify what the learning objectives. Let me just tweak this a bit. Okay, so you can add good. your own title. Yeah, so that's all you need to provide. And when I click generate outline, it's going to generate a course outline for you. And then this course outline, you can then go and edit it. Um, and you can you can see over here, it has created a course outline. And okay, if you want, cool. you can go and edit this if required. Please mm -hmm. remember this is still in the staging and in very early stages of development. Of so course. the content yeah. which is going to retrieve, again, it's generative, so we can't predict what it is. So there is still some fine tuning to do over there. Um, and if you're happy with the outline, just go and click Create Project. And now you will notice that it'll, it'll take a little bit of uh, time, but you can see that the gener the course is being created. It's pulled oh, out wow. images. It's picked up the content and it's applied it to the templates, which it believes is applicable. So you can see it has taken the introduction and it has created an introduction slide. It has created yeah. all these additional slides. It's applied some templates. So here we have the image grid and mm -hmm. uh, you can see here it has put it in a carousal um, uh, interaction. Oh, so It'll even yeah. do the um, the widgets as well, not just Absolutely. static slides. That's really cool. Yes. Wow. This is very cool, isn't it? Yes, it's very cool. You know, <laughs> I find myself sometimes in that situation where, you know, I'm looking at a blank slide and, you know, I really should be writing a storyboard. I just don't know how to get started. This yes. could really help me. You know, like obviously you want to validate the content. You don't want to just take it at face value. But to get started, sometimes that's the biggest hurdle. You know, you're you're struggling to figure out how, you know, how am I going to build this course they've asked me to build? This is a right. great way to just sort of give you that first draft and you can then obviously validate the content and refine it if necessary. This is so cool, Shara. That's awesome. <laughs> Yes, and you know, like like you just said, you know, you can't just rely on this. It does take the drudgery out of finding the base content, and it does, mm -hmm. you know. But over here, you can then refine it. You know, you definitely need to. You can add to this, right? It picks up all this content. It builds the uh, base um, outline. So, but and now when you you know, select the image on the screen, you can go and now regenerate and uh, add another image. So let me just show you how I would do that. So over here, let me add an image 
of a dinosaur. So this is camera. kind of kind of like how you do generative AI in Photoshop right now. That's yes. Cool. Yes, so we are leveraging um, Adobe Firefly's generative right. capabilities. And you can see over here, it has created this custom image for me of a dinosaur with, an, uh, with a camera. A camera. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and it's not just the uh, image, right? Even the content. So let me go and select this content over here. You can now yeah. see this uh, uh, properties over here where I can go and change the prompt or if you don't like the tone of the content, you can change it to a conversational tone. So let me mm -hmm. just select that. So you can see that over here, the tone has changed. I guess nice. it's not very obvious. So let me change the nope. prompt a bit. Sure. So I'll just say um, <laughs> tone using <laughs> yes. Sure. So I do want it to uh, change, and you can see now. Yo, <laughs> yo, let's talk camera settings, my peeps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can have so, a lot of fun with that. Yeah. Yes, and over here again, you know, if you feel this is too wordy, you can just go and change the number of words. You can oh, you know, that's reduce good. it yeah. to fifty, so you sure. can regenerate this uh, with the you know, minimal number of words. If you want to itemize it, you can. So you can just select it and regenerate it. So you can see a lot of the manual uh, work has been reduced, uh, but at yeah. the same time, you have control over what you want to do. So you definitely set the tone for this. You can then wordsmith this further, mm -hmm. uh, but the base thing, it's it's made it so much easier. Oh yeah, no. And, and the thing is like my customers, because not only do I, teach Captivate on YouTube. I, I actually have customers who hire me to build e-learning. You know, the, the thing for, for me is that, again, you know, I, I sometimes struggle on how to get started. Maybe their content has just been like, just a pure content dump and I don't even know how to organize it. This really yeah. is fantastic. And of course, every company has a different tone as well. Some are are use that more conversational style, which is what I prefer. But mm -hmm. some organizations they want to be very professional, so you can you can choose that option. That's really great. Yeah, this is really yep. and, awesome. And this is not all. So let me show you something else. Oh, there's more. <laughs> there's more. There's a lot more. <laughs> okay, cool. So, so you can see I selected three slides. I mean, you can mm -hmm. select more if you want. And you see I've got a new button on the right hand side now which says create assessment. So I'm going to select that. Mm -hmm. And the assessments are also going to be generated automatically for you. So it's going to base these questions on the slides that I've selected. OK, so, cool. Right. And you can see over cool. here it has generated uh, uh, five questions. And uh, over here, let me just choose one of these. And if you go to the properties over here, you will notice that it has also selected the answer, the correct answer, and it has uh, coded that for you. So all, all this has cool. been automatic. Yeah, and you can see That's there are different so dials. So you have uh, true or false. So this is what is going to be like fine-tuned further to just just see how how best we can build on this. So this is this is. A very exciting for us because if you can see over here, all elements of the course, the image, the content, yeah. the assessment, you know, this is all um, something you can uh, generate automatically using uh, generative AI. That's incredible. And, and if you think this is all, there's more. Let me now show what <laughs> okay, we can do. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so here I'm just going to add... Um, some audio to my course. So let me just go. I have this audio file. Okay. So, I mean, this is something you would do, right? You would have audio, yeah. you, you, you will have uh, an audio file, or you would have a video in your course. So mm -hmm. you can now auto generate captions for this audio file using nice. AI. So I'm going to select this, and right. um, you can see. So this is a 30 second audio clip that I've chosen. Sure. So we'll just give it some time to. So here you have seen uh, us generate um, 
text to speech and so now we are introducing this functionality of speech, speech to, text. to text right exactly that is brilliant so you can see that uh, the speech uh, has been converted to text and uh, captions have been added separate captions which have been synchronized with the audio so let's test this out now hi i'm julianne cost here are three quick ways to find filter and isolate layers in photoshop First, let's talk about how to quickly find layers in a Photoshop document. To quickly find a specific layer, we can use the keyboard shortcut Command plus Option Shift F on Mac or Control plus Alt Shift F on Windows. This automatically selects the filter by name option in the layers panel. As you saw, the Perfect. text, the captions came appropriately at the time yeah. when uh, Julianne was speaking. So, uh, so this is this, you know, text to speech uh, functionality. I mean, sorry, speech to text functionality that I you're know, introducing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with... <laughs> I always get it backwards too. No, that is fantastic. The the yeah. thing. So I'm I worry about my viewers who might be thinking right now, oh, is this going to make my job obsolete? You know, because we've now automated all these different workflows. Mm -hmm. One of the sessions uh, at Adobe uh, Learning Summit was with uh, uh, Josh Cavalier, and he, he really covered uh, some really interesting points about AI. And it's not so much about making someone's job obsolete, but I think what, it, what you need to do, what all of you need to do, is to think about these workflows and think about the time that that's going to save you and your ability to deliver on an e-learning project much more rapidly than perhaps you did in the past. So don't think about it as something that replaces your job. Obviously, there's much more that needs to go in developing an e-learning course, but you need to think about, okay, when I'm when I'm talking to my stakeholder, you know, maybe it's not two months to develop an e-learning course anymore. Maybe now it's only a month or maybe even a few weeks. Um, yeah. And that's to your advantage. It's not going to replace your job. It's going to enhance your job. So uh, for anyone who might be getting worried, thinking that, you know, their hard work is going to be replaced by AI, I don't think that's the case. I think it's just going to make our lives a lot easier and rapid. Yes. And uh, two other things I want to call out here, Paul, is mm -hmm. that um, so this particular uh, demo, what I showed you, had us creating a course from scratch. But mm -hmm. to reference the other use case you shared where you have some reference materials, you can also now create a generative AI course using a source document. So let me just show you how we would do that. Okay. So you select you select the AI Copilot and you click the Begin button. And in this particular example, I'll show you how you can select a file and generate a course from that file. So I created, uh, I mean, there's NFL going on, uh, mm -hmm. NFL's in the air. So I just put, I wanted to learn how to uh, play uh, American football. So I just Googled that information, put it in a Word doc in a, a PDF, and mm -hmm. then you can see that when I uploaded that document, it has automatically created a course title. It has identified a potential target audience and defined some learning objectives. Again, you can go and cool. change this, and then you can click Generate Outlines. So now, if you don't like the unpredictable nature of uh, uh, the content returned by a generative AI, you can use a source document. You can you know, uh, uh, refer to a specific a source of information and sure. create a course. So over here, you can see again, it has uh, created a course outline and then you click project. And this is uh, great because a uh, uh, use case that I can think of over here is uh, where uh, a lot of your subject matter experts give you content and you want to right. pick it from that. You have old courses, legacy courses. Uh, you may yep. want to export it as a PDF and then import it here so that you can now apply all the regenerative uh, uh, image capabilities that AI is providing. You can enhance uh, it and spruce yeah. it up. Yeah, I didn't think about that, but yeah, we've got all of this content from the years of 
before we had Adobe Captivate 12. The other thing I was thinking about, and I'm very eager to try this for myself when this becomes available, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times people will reach out to me and they'll say, well, we need this legislative course. So mm -hmm. here's the legislation, this multi thick document of laws and rules and stuff like that. Let's see, I'd love to try it out and see what happens when you upload, you know, government legislation and you need compliance courses built for that. Cause those yeah. are sometimes the more difficult courses to build. And wouldn't it be great if all the heavy lifting could be done by AI? That's awesome. Yes, yes. And again, there's another uh, use case for this uh, uh, functionality. If you do not want to use a source document, if you do not want, you have a course where all the content is your custom content, mm -hmm. you can still go ahead and use AI maybe for just the images. So let me show you. So over here, I'm just going and adding a one of the templates here, right? So this introduction. Okay. So let's pretend I'm creating a custom course. So okay. I'm just going to add uh, the slide here. And I just want to, uh, you know, uh, add some images, but I want to use AI for this images. So in which case I can just, you see this additional icon over here on the right? Mm -hmm. So I think over here, because we are all already in the AI co-pilot, this may not be a good example. Let me start a course from fresh. So here I'm um, creating a new project, right? I haven't gone right. to the AI co-pilot. Uh, this could be an existing course that I've just opened, or this could be a new course that I'm creating. But over here, I want a little more control on this. So I'm using, I'm selecting the templates that I want to use, mm -hmm. and I go into this interface. I now have an additional icon here, which is the AI assistant. I just click that. And over here, based on the components I choose, I can go and generate this. So over here, if this is the legislative course, right, you can see the constitution of the United States, right? Mm -hmm. So I yeah. just want an uh, image. I just want an image to be generated for that because the course is about the the Constitution of the United States. So you can see it has uh, brought some images which I can use for this course. So That's you can cool. create a custom course from scratch and be very selective about the components that you want from uh, that you want to use AI for. So these are the three flavors, I would say, that this functionality can be used for. One is to create it from scratch, to create a course from scratch. The second one is to create a course using a source document. And three is to enhance an existing course, so to create a new course, but use the AI assistant for certain components of the course. That's incredible. And it's it's great that you've not just done one thing. You've done, you know, you can you can use it in your existing courseware. You can build all new courseware, and uh, and pick and choose how you use the the uh, the AI component. That's really great. Yeah. So as you, as you can see, I'm just selecting the course name here. I may want a title uh, for um, a course on legis. Um, um, U.S. Constitution, which is maybe five words long, right? So you can you mm -hmm. you could use any prompt, and so over here you as you can see, a lot depends on the prompts that you provide. So mm -hmm. yes, AI may kind of do away with some jobs, the maintenance of the uh, the jobs which are more about you know just sourcing docu uh, sourcing content, mm -hmm. but the actual prompts and how you retrieve that content is still going to be controlled by the author. And that's not going to go away. That's incredible. This is. You know, I knew that uh, I knew that Adobe Captivate uh, was the, the new version was going to be a game changer, but this is really a game changer. This is amazing. Thank you, Paul. Well, I unless there's another secret that uh, that Sherith has in her back pocket, I think you've covered everything you wanted to share, right? That's right. So th these are the new features, uh, upcoming features, but I just want to call it out again that, yeah. uh, that this is a sneak preview of uh, functionality we are working on, but there's yeah. no guarantee that uh, this can't, uh, all these features would show up in a, 
a product. It may, it may not show. We are excited about it. We would like to bring this to you. But there are a lot of other considerations, other things which could uh, prevent us from sharing this in our product. But uh, yeah, this is the, this is a sneak preview into all the exciting functionality that we are working on. Well, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I'll be seeing this technology and functionality in Adobe Captivate really soon. So thank you, Sherith. Um, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, this sneak peek right from Adobe. So um, we're looking forward to these new features. And of course, there's some other new features that we'll probably be seeing not before long. So. Thanks again, Sherith. I hope uh, I hope everyone's enjoyed your presentation today. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice day. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.